Hey everybody, I was putting together a simple home audio system and I needed a preamp control center. And I ended up purchasing this mini preamp and I'm impressed. This has a lot of functionality, it sounds good, and it's really inexpensive. And so I thought I would tell you a little bit about it. I think it would be a great addition for a lot of people's desktop audio systems. Uh, for example, you may have a computer that is driving a pair of powered speakers in your desktop, and that's where you do your production, or where you watch YouTube videos like this. And maybe you've got an audio interface box in the mix, like a Focusrite box for a mic input, regardless. You could take the output of your computer or your audio interface box and put it into this preamp. And then the output of the preamp would drive your powered speakers. And that would give you more functionality. It would give you a convenient volume control right down by your keyboard. So you don't have to point and click with the mouse and get a knob right there. It would give you bass and treble control. So if you felt like my video sounded just a little too crispy, you could grab the treble control and tweak that a bit. If you wanted to listen to something other than audio from your computer, you could do that. You could hit the source button on this unit and switch over and listen to playback from your phone or from a memory stick. You could also kick back in your chair and watch a program on the computer and adjust the volume remotely with the remote control and not have to get out of your chair. So I think this offers a whole lot of functionality. I wasn't attracted to any of those things necessarily. I was just putting together a simple audio system. So when I do housework around the house, when we have guests over having dinner, I could have some background music. But I had one requirement that was a little bit challenging to find. And that was I wanted a hi-fi preamp but since I was putting the system together with equipment that I already have and I had a pro sound power amplifier, I wanted a preamplifier that offered balanced audio outputs on three pin XLR connectors. That's a little bit rare. And I was able to find hi fi preamps that offer balanced output, but almost all of those products tended to be pretty high-end products at a comparably high-end price point. And I was trying to put together a system that was easy, simple, and inexpensive. And I was having a hard time finding a preamp that was just a simple preamp but offered me balanced outputs within my price range. Now, I know I could have just used any old hi-fi preamp and used a unbalanced to balanced converter amplifier afterwards. But the price of that converter amplifier would push me up in my price point, and it's just more equipment, more wires, and I'm trying to keep it simple. And so I found this unit, which offers balanced audio output. It also has standard RCA pin jacks for output as well. And so that to me was a game changer. Now, I know this isn't the only inexpensive preamp on the market with balanced audio outputs, but it's one of the few. And when I got this, I was impressed by how well it works, how good it sounds. I'll show you the features, the measurements that I came up with when I put this on the audio analyzer, and I'll show you the frequency response graphs. And we'll talk about uh, some of the things I love and some of the things that, well, Let's take a look at the front panel of down at the lower corner. There's a selector for what input source we want to listen to. That could be inputs coming in from an RCA pin jack on the back end, standard analog inputs. There's a Bluetooth receiver, so you can pair this device with your phone and play back audio from your phone. And there's also a selection for USB memory sticks. So we can take a USB memory stick that's loaded up with MP3 files and play those files back. So you can make your selection with that control. Moving over, we have a headphone jack. And the headphone output is fairly decent. It can drive my 600 ohm phones without a problem. Sounds good. It won't melt your head with headphone level, but it's ample and sufficient if you ask me. Sounds good. Then we have treble and bass controls. 
so you can adjust the tone somewhat. You'll notice the position of these controls is the position that I arrived at when I had this unit on the analyzer, and that is the setting that allows for the flattest frequency response. And finally, we have the output volume control, which controls the amount of drive into your amplifiers or your powered speakers. There's a series of buttons along the side here for next and previous track and pause, and these are used when playing back audio from a USB memory key. So you can step through your tracks if you want. It's got a pair of Soviet type preamplifier tubes in it, and it has a analog VU meter, which has fairly nice ballistics, and it gives you an indication as to the amount of audio going through the box. This is a two-channel device with only one meter, so that meter is a bit of a summation of those two channels, and I wouldn't consider it to be a reference uh, measurement tool. But it does give you some indication as to if things are working, and it works well. So let's spin the unit around, and I'll show you the back panel. On the back panel, we have a place for a power input and a power switch to turn the unit on and off. This section is the output, which gives you XLR balanced outputs for left and right channel, as well as unbalanced RCA pin jack outputs for standard hi-fi gear. We have a pair of RCA pin jack inputs for analog signal input. We have a USB connection where you can plug in a USB memory stick that's loaded with music and there is a antenna jack and this unit includes a small whip antenna for the Bluetooth connection. I find the unit was really easy to pair up with my phone and has pretty significant signal range. All of these features seem to work really well. It pairs up easily with Bluetooth. I had no problem at all and I have good signal quality. USB memory stick likewise works great. And when you turn the unit off and then come back and turn it back on later, it resumes playback at the same point in the list of songs on your USB memory stick. So that's convenient. The case is made out of aluminum. It's all metal. The quality of construction seems good. The front panel controls have a good feel to them. They seem solid. They don't wiggle and they feel like quality parts. The whole unit is very small, but it feels like a quality device and especially for the price it's pretty impressive so let's cut away and take a look at the measured results that I got when I put this unit onto the analyzer here's the frequency response that I measured using the audio precision analyzer the input signal was put into the RCA analog input jacks on the preamp and we took the output signal from the balanced output as you can see, it's a pretty flat graph, and I adjusted the tone controls on the unit for maximum flatness. And the settings that I arrived at were with the treble control at approximately the 1 o'clock position, and the bass control at approximately the 10 o'clock position. So the tone controls were not set to perfectly flat 12 o'clock positions. There was a little bit of adjustment there. And with the tone controls in this position, this is the resulting graph, which is quite flat. You'll see there's a little bit of roll-off at the extreme bottom end, but above 40 hertz or so, we're almost perfectly flat across the audio range. You'll see on the top end, there's a brick wall filter happening right before 20 kilohertz. And that's a sign to me that there's most likely digital processing happening inside of this box. And it makes me presume that the audio level control and the tone controls are managed through digital signal processing. Here we see the impact of the tone controls. Once again, we have the flat line in the middle, which is with the controls set to their flat position. We still have that filter happening right before 20 kilohertz, which depicts digital processing happening inside of the box. My suspicion is that these bass and treble filters are digitally processed, and they're fairly wide shelving filters centered around 1 kilohertz, with approximately 10 dB of boost capability, and a little more than 10 dB worth of cut ability. In usage, I find that the tone controls work quite effectively for sweetening the sound. 
So we've gone over the operation of the device, all of its controls and features. I've shown you the performance measurements. So let's do a quick roast and toast where I tell you some of the things I really like about this unit and some of those things that, well, if I could, I would consider changing. Some of the things I like is that it seems like it's a nice quality device. It's an all aluminum metal case. It's put together nicely and it just seems like a quality piece of equipment. The controls have a decent feel to them. They don't feel like they're really cheap and inexpensive. It has good headphone drive and it just works well. And it works particularly well for the price point that it's at. Like I mentioned earlier, it's got balanced audio output and that's rare to find at this price and that works well for me in my situation. And if you have powered loudspeakers, like powered monitor speakers, you could drive those directly from the balanced outputs. So that's nice. So there are some things about this unit that I would change, however. Uh, one of them is the packaging. When this unit arrives, it comes in a box that isn't much bigger than this. And it comes with an instruction pamphlet that is only a couple of pages of pamphlet that looks like it has a lot of Chinese heritage. Uh, mentioning things like the tubes at a mysterious sound. Well, I'm not sure if mysterious is exactly a good thing or a bad thing. Now, of course, when we are talking about sound quality, I think this device sounds just perfectly fine. It's got a 5534 op amp in it as one of its primary amplification stages. It uses these Soviet tubes. And so all the components lend me to think that it should have a pretty clean signal chain and I think it sounds good. It's got very low noise floor and the audio sounds great. When we take a look at the device, it's a tube type device and I'm pretty agnostic about tubes. There are tube type devices that I think sound great and there are transistor devices that I think sound great. I'm not necessarily swayed by the tube features of this device. Perhaps some customers are. In my mind, it adds a maintenance element because tubes don't last forever. Every few thousand hours, you probably need to replace those tubes. I would prefer to have the device not have tubes in it so I don't have to worry about future maintenance of replacing tubes. But they do, as they say, add a mysterious sound. So perhaps they do elevate the tone character of the device. This has one meter for two channels, so that means to me that it's not a serious reference tool. But it does give you some idea of that things are operating, and I guess it adds a cool retro effect. So, okay. I think for the price of that meter and the price of these tubes, they could have eliminated both of those, and I would have been a perfectly happy customer. And I would have preferred to see both of these replaced with a single LCD panel display that shows a little more information. The LCD panel display could have a couple of bar graphs on it instead of the analog meter. With a couple of bar graphs with a lot of segments, I think that would be more useful than the meter. And it would let you monitor the output levels on both left and right channels. That display could also provide some information about playback from USB memory sticks. So when you're playing back from the USB stick, it could show you what track number you're playing and the song title and artist name. That would be nice. Another thing about this is that the controls down here have the bass and treble control ordered in a way that I find just a tiny bit astonishing. Bass is this control and treble is this one. I would prefer to see the bass control on the left hand side and the treble on the right hand side. When we're looking at a frequency response graph, it goes from low to high, left to right. And that's the way I'd like to see these controls. That's how most equipment is. So the fact that these two are swapped around, well, they're perfectly functional. They work fine, but it just seems a little unusual to me. The headphone output is great. It uh, can drive my 600 ohm phones without problems. Like I mentioned, it's not going to blow your head off with level, but it's perfectly adequate in my mind. The controls here for the volume, bass, and treble are pretty low and close to the surface of the desk. And so sometimes with my fat fingers, they're a little bit tight to get at. 
but they work fine. It's not a big deal. If I could redesign the packaging, I would make a nice big master volume control, bigger than the other controls. And I would probably change the packaging to be more horizontal. Uh, I think this is a cool looking, semi-retro looking box. And for a desktop audio system, it might be perfect. But for my needs, I'd prefer to see it a bit more horizontal. Maybe not quite as tall, but wider. And preferably in a 19-inch professional audio rack. So a 19-inch single rack space unit with a bigger volume control. That would be the way I'd package it. As I mentioned earlier, it's got balanced audio outputs, and I think that's a real plus, especially at this price point. And that makes this unit able to directly interface with my ProSound power amplifiers. I think that's great. It also means it could directly interface with better quality studio monitor speakers you might have on your desk that accept balanced inputs. So I think at the price point, it represents tremendous value. Now, if I was trying to impress my audiophile friends and I had a $5,000 power amp, well, I'm not going to choose this and I'm not going to pair that power amp with a $100 preamp. But for casual situations and general purpose audio, and if I'm not trying to impress people with how much money I can spend, I think this works out just great. I hope you found the review to be interesting, and if you did, please take a moment and give me a thumbs up so that YouTube can know that this video is appreciated. Maybe they'll promote it to others. If you like the content on the channel here, please consider subscribing so you can find this channel more easily next time. Hope you stick around, watch more videos, and I'll catch you soon on another upcoming episode.